and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Today's overview, the Commodore P50 programmable calculator, because I'm so geeky enough to find it interesting. And anyway, if you do your research, calculators are actually are at the cutting edge of electronics development in the, hmm, from when they were invented from about 60s through to 70s, mostly in and integration in that. And actually, fun fact, the microprocessor was developed to put in a calculator. I had some trouble with the manual focus. It turns out once you start recording, you can't change it to manual focus. However, you can get it to adjust by pressing one of the buttons. If I can remember which one, I'll sort it out. No point trial now. So I will just reset that. Then, as I said, it's a programmable Commodore P50 calculator. There was also a P100, it only fits in frame like that, so we're holding it like that and we'll turn it on. And it's from, well, it came out in 1975. This model, if we look here, we're bringing it in slowly so the camera can focus, okay? I won't take it past that. But it's a MOS chip, as indicated by up here. Yeah, it might be worth getting a pen or a laser pointer or something. MOS chip as indicated here. And then here we've got the date code where I'm rubbing the pen over. 7561. That basically means 1975 week 61. Or is it 51? It's... 61. I look like a pillock if there aren't 61 weeks in a year, but that's generally how the date codes work. So this is late 1975, early 60s, so this will probably be not early 60s, early 76. And other part numbers are just various other revisions, which can also be date codes like 4278. That'd be a weird date code setup, though. Chips and capacitors are often a good way to identify it. Sadly, the back cover's not on this thing. It's got power in, which should probably be 9 volt. It's got a nice LED bubble display thingy, my bob. And of course, Standard sort of touch membrane keyboards, and I've just made the display do something. There we go, we just made it do a calculation. It's got eight segments it can display at one time when you type stuff in. If you press this button here, you'll watch that one engage and the end one engages, and then whenever you hit the button, it counts up till it errors. The interesting thing is, the segment there, the very end seg, 7 seg, and the very end segment seg that way, doesn't actually have the circuitry to support any numbers, so essentially they're duds. And so we do, I think it's something like a 14 segment display, I haven't bothered counting to be honest, and I haven't really put any research into it. So if we do this, times 9999999 equals, and then we get our last first two segments to activate and the middle one there I have not figured out how to get that one to light up still working on that now we've got plenty of mathematical functions that I do not know how to use because I don't have the instructions it's a scrap scavenger my conscience just my conscience just couldn't leave it laying there it's got its standard four functions and loads of other scientific calculator crap that I don't know how to use, but it's programmable, as indicated by the go to. These, if I am correct, are all the programming keys for inputting programming commands. For example, one of these instantly will crash, will cause an error when it's pressed. I can't remember which one though, and um, it's one of these. It's RS, that's it. Watch this. It calculates, it thinks and it errors. Press it again and well you have to reset it and we press it again and it'll instantly error because so on and so forth. It's only a one chip design as well. But enough yapping. Let's see what the display looks like under the cover. 
it'll probably be one of those that's invisible to IR light, but this doesn't. But digital cameras don't have night shot plus. In fact, you can actually see behind the display on the camera better than you can see it in real life. Because camera, because CCDs are more sensitive to IR light. I'll probably speed this up so you'll get me rambling in high pitch or something. Not that my voice, although my voice was already quite high pitch, and we'll just peel off the tape. We don't want to damage the tape because we've got to carry on using it. There we go, just pop off from there. You know what, sod it, it's going to require unscrewing the thing that keeps giving me grief, so sod it. <laughs> oh, I just find an image on the internet or something of the display type and stick it on or something like that, find some free Wikipedia image that I don't need to worry about referencing. <laughs> that'll do. And that'll be of the display which will have come up beforehand rendering that completely pointless. I'm tired because I've had a busy day and got lots of stuff done. Brilliant little machine. And utterly looks just plain awesome. And it's my third vintage calculator because I've also got the VFD one and I've got the one over here, the Toshiba, which I did a simple overview with a little bit of a tear down on. Anyway, enough rambling about mathematical calculating devices, vintage ones at like that. Well, they're vintage, so they're interesting. Modern well, ones aren't that interesting. We shall call that a day, but just for comparison's sake, a few years later, technological developments lead to something like this. The beautiful Casio PB700. Far more capable. Has a fully fledged programming language of basic, so essentially you can use it as a a computer of that era, although limited by its specs due to its size. And look, it's still on. It also has a power saving feature where after a certain period of time that will blank out and it will just display the decimal point because, well, LEDs were invented in the 70s, so they weren't at their most energy efficient, so it would obviously do that to save power. Bit of a pain when you're reading off a number sum though. There we go, there we go, it just did it. The gold paint that would have gone round here is just worn off. But also, the reason why these displays are actually so small is because LEDs are extremely were extremely expensive for that period of time. Have we got a dead segment or is it just a camera? Just a camera being a cock. No, it's just a lens thing. Uh, they're actually a deeper red than you're seeing on the camera. They're more sort of like closer to that of a gas plasma display. Yeah, we've got segment plane. Silly buggers. Can we get it back up and going? I just reset the thing. <laughs> okay. What way to do it? Uh, I'll sort that out. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Night, night, all. I'm tired and I need dinner. <laughs>